Pastor Mark West from Winfield First Church of the Nazarene. This has been a phenomenal year for our church. Um, Sam kind of set the table for us in, uh, in some respects, and I'll talk about that right off the bat. Um, we were the recipient of, a, of a, a gift from an estate. A gentleman had left the church as a beneficiary in the estate, and as a result of that, through uh, about a, this is my third year now here, and, and celebrating that this month actually. Um, when we came, the church had a little over, uh, I think around eighty-four, eighty-five thousand dollars in debt, and there'd be a, there was a, a push to eliminate that and get it paid off so that we could be debt-free. And we had done, um, as you can see, we paid the balance down to about forty-seven thousand dollars just through special efforts that were uh, taken by our church people, extra giving. Uh, designated giving just specifically to the debt reduction and then uh, this year we were the recipient of that uh, gift from that estate that estate allowed us to eliminate our debt so we burn our mortgage and, and hopefully <laughs> never get enter into that phase again uh, because I believe in debt-free living and debt-free uh, ministry as well as best as we can um, so that's a great uh, gift to us from Vernon and Ruth Butcher, and they um, designated that. And I would, after hearing uh, this other story, you know, that that's a, if you haven't done that in your estate planning, do it and make it. It's a great gift that you keep giving uh, that, uh, to the church and to the ministry. Secondly, uh, we celebrated the hiring of our associate pastor uh, youth, uh, and to youth and young adults. Pastor Gage Krebs came on staff just, uh, just recently with us. Now, the, the problem with having a good children's ministry and a person, uh, Pastor Ken Douglas, who's our children's pastor in his longevity now, he has built this ministry. And so we have all these kids going up another youth. And so we create this uh, avenue that we, uh, and this opening for this position. Uh, it's really not a problem. It's a great uh, joy to be in that situation. And uh, we're looking forward to ministry, Pastor Gage and him leading our youth. And, and then uh, it branching out into the young adult ministry as well. There's a definite need there in, in our congregation for that. Uh, participation in the revitalization process through the leadership of um, our, our Kansas district. I appreciate so much Dan Broughton and his ministry uh, to reaching out to churches and taking them through a process of looking at what they're doing and what they can do to better effectively minister in their community. And so part of that process was an all-church meeting where he actually came down and shared uh, in a seminar setting. Uh, about a year ago last May, we participated in that and helped us kind of fill in some holes in our vision. Uh, we've worked on leadership and continue to work on leadership development and training of our lay leaders. And then, uh, through that year process, uh, I and several pastors have uh, had the opportunity to participate in uh, revitalization huddles where we meet monthly. We're reading a common book together, sharing strategies, and investing in one another's lives. That's been very beneficial to our, to our church, and I do so appreciate uh, his uh, leadership in that area. One of the things that came out of that is our emphasis on, instead of... Uh, being a church inside of these four walls, which we are, but uh, the emphasis upon going outside of the four walls. And so we've done that this year with uh, several things. The first thing that we tried, uh, an event that we pulled off in terms of outreach was the emergency response personnel appreciation. It's affectionately known as ERP around here. It's not real, it doesn't sound real pleasant, but that's what we call it. And uh, we had a great time kicking that off on 9-11 last, uh, last fall. And we look forward to doing that again on our second time around and uh, having more involvement and connecting even more with the community. We did that on the grounds. I think we're gonna take it off the grounds this time and change it up a little bit. That was a great opportunity for people to give and, and give back to our community. Then uh, later in the year, we were encouraged to, again, be offsite with some things and not expecting people to come inside of our doors. So we went and rented a, a facility and, and grounds south of town, about two or three miles south, called Quail Valley Farms. And in, on that site, this is a, one of the ponds that they have, but they have a nice gathering place there. We uh, fed them a meal, uh, called it community movie night, did a lot of um, invitations, a lot of prayer walking, pre pre prefacing that, and in actually that week leading up to that Wednesday night event. 
and handing out hand person to person um, invitations. We had a great response, uh, about 180 people, uh, about a 15% response to the gospel that night, uh, 16 rededications of their life and eight brand new Christians that night. And so when the scripture says that the harvest is white uh, and ready to be drawn in, it truly is. And uh, I'll take that ratio any day in my congregation, getting that response. You know, that's, that's an awesome response. So we're excited about that. Then uh, moving on with uh, getting outside of the four walls, VBS in the park last summer, we took our VBS up to the park at Island Park and did that uh, for four successive Wednesday nights. And that was uh, a great opportunity for our kids, our youth to serve and our kids to receive. And we had, um, more emphasis now and this year we're going to do that again with uh, reaching out beyond our our body and uh, looking forward to that one of the things that we're called to do is in in, in ministry is through work and witness and uh, we did that a trip to minnesota with our youth at the well house that is a very well known to our congregation several in the church support that ministry it's uh, in, in rochester minnesota and uh, they basically provide very, very efficient and low cost housing for people that are at the Mayo Clinic and a wonderful ministry. Uh, lives were changed and we were on the receiving end of that during that uh, week of, of ministry. Then we had a team that go, went to Arizona to the uh, Native American Christian Academy. They took some sewing machines that had been donated through school, from a school, one of our uh, Lay people was a teacher in the home ex department, and they home ec department, and they were um, eliminating that program. So they had some sewing machines. She asked if she could buy them. They said no. We'll donate them though, and so they did. And thanks to the Dexter uh, Community School District, they donated uh, several sewing machines, and our people had the opportunity to go out and work with those kids, and changing lives uh, before and after pictures. There's a remarkable difference in the connectivity that our people have with them, so we were excited about that. And then our youth took a, a trip to the homeless shelter in South Dakota over spring break. They gave up their spring break time to go and minister in that homeless shelter, and again, lives were changed and impacted. Then locally, we uh, encouraged our children's ministry to, to find ways to go out and, and uh, minister, and so we have the privilege of having the veterans home in our community, and uh, I think now four times, two Easter's and two Christmases. We have gone out there, and I say we, we as a body, Pastor Ken's the one that coordinates all that, but uh, taking our kids out and had performed their Christmas musical or Easter musical for the, the great uh, people that served our country, and what an awesome privilege it is. And, you know, it's not just the, the veterans that are being ministered to, the staff uh, often uh, reflect and, and, and provide feedback saying, you know, we, we appreciate what you did, and and our adults catch them stopping in the hall, looking down and, and listening. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to get out of our area here and go be the church out in our community. One of the things that the district is encouraging us to do is to be a part of the church planning. We weren't quite at that point uh, where we were ready to, to take that in, initial step in, in planning a church, but we are a sponsoring church. And we had the privilege of joining with uh, both of these churches that have been mentioned earlier, The Rock with Shredell Breathitt and Nick Hale at Lifeline. Uh, we were able to partner with them. One of the things that I am so proud of our leadership if, uh, for doing and deciding right off the bat when they received that, that gift, um, it wasn't about us. It was about how can we serve and how we've been blessed. Now let's be the vessel that this blessing flows through. And I commend my church board and leadership for taking that initiative, and they have done that well, and will continue to do that, I'm confident. They've got other dreams and passions that they want to see fulfilled. So it's my honor to, to represent the Winfield First Church of the Nazarene. Uh, we're in pursuit of all that God wants for us, and uh, loving God and loving others, that's our passion. Thank you.